I received a question not too long ago from a very loyal subscriber asking for advice about preparing her child to move into the dorms and start his freshman year in college. Like what things should she be doing? And she had some very specific questions about what she should be doing to prepare herself. I realized that it's the end of June, summer has just started and nobody really wants to focus on back to school. And I'm sure all the back to school videos will be coming out at the end of July and in August. But honestly, for such a big move, I really do think you really need to be thinking about some of these things early on the early side and I think right now is perfect so this will be a bit of a longer video so get comfortable get yourself a snack a drink whatever and let's go all I could really do is talk to you from the perspective of the experience that I had with my son last year uh, both my husband and I did live on campus but things have changed and I think a lot for the better. Things are much more accessible and much more convenient. So know upfront that it will work out, but here are some proactive steps that you can take. Number one is the fact that I noticed that they make it, the colleges make it possible for the roommates in the dorms to get to know each other long before they actually get on campus. My son was using some kind of app and he was interacting with his roommates online. And so before he even got to the dorm room, they had already decided that they needed a refrigerator in their room, which was very useful, useful for storing snacks, milk yogurt leftovers for you know when you're up late studying and you get hungry and the dining halls are not open anymore very useful so online they decided who is coming with the refrigerator and a number of things can happen maybe someone already owns a refrigerator or you're going to split the cost and my son had two other roommates and someone happened to have the refrigerator so we didn't even have to worry about that day on move-in day we thought we were getting to the dorms early and we live close closest to the school out of all of them like i think the one that lived the closest had to drive a, two hours to get to the dorm room we were the last ones there and they had not discussed you know who was going to be getting what there's one twin bed all by itself against one wall and a set of bunk beds and there were two closets two and like two individual closet spaces and a medium sized chest of drawers and i believe the closets had some kind of uh shelving some kind of storage space where you could put things that you you didn't want to hang and so when we got there, one kid had the individual bunk all to himself. The other kid had the bottom bunk. And the only thing that was left for my son was the top bunk. But that's not what bothered me more than anything. What bothered me more than anything is the fact that they were practically completely unpacked and they had each staked a closet and the bottom of the beds which is pr the only other visible place where you could store stuff was already claimed by them. So we literally walked into the room with all of my son's stuff and my son has a lot of stuff. We literally stood in the middle of the room. Like, I mean, I felt like a stork. There was so little space. I practically felt like I had to stand there on one foot with all our stuff wondering, okay, where are we going to put all of this stuff? So, Different moms respond to uh, transitioning their kids this way different ways. And my son happened to have the moms who came and took over and wanted to make sure their child had as much as possible. I mean, we're all paying the same price for the room, but they, they, had, they claimed all of the space. We had decided not to buy bookcases or anything like that because we wanted to see what the other two would bring. Well, one kid had a giant wall unit bookshelf that his mom, you know, had him bring from his room and the other kid had another bookcase. And the only thing we actually brought was one of those uh, plastic 
uh, draw sets, and it's in the basement. I probably should have brought it up. But the ones you can get from Walmart, uh, it looks like a file cabinet, but it's, it's all made of plastic. We bought one of those thinking that maybe he could put it on the floor and put like, you know, those loose things that you wouldn't put in your clothing drawer in that. That's the only thing we brought. And honestly, all we could do was put that on top of the chest. And so I kind of felt the frustration building up in me because you had that one mom practically like putting, organizing a picture just so on the shelf for her son, you know, and I guess she looked at my face and she said, this is your son's desk. We left the desk in front of the window for your son. So we, we were thinking of him. And my thing was, where is he going to put his stuff? And, you know, immediately the room, they're good boys. They jumped in and they said, yes, we will definitely share. Yes, we're going to share this closet, even though it looks like every available space in the closet is already taken up. We're going to share this closet. So I would say who gets what bed and how you're going to divide the room space that could have been something that they could have been talking about online before they even got there so that we could kind of avoid you can avoid the tension that happens the day up because I know that some of the emotion that was in the room had nothing to do with with any of that everyone's worried about their kid and everyone wants to leave feeling that their kid is comfortable and good to go. So I realized that it was nothing personal, but I think it could have been handled better. I mean, if you're going to get the top bunk, maybe, you know, as a concession, you'll get more drawer space or more closet space or something so that the experience feels more balanced because dare I repeat again that we are all paying the same price for this room. So I remember feeling frustrated that he ended up with the top bunk but on the real when it comes to getting actually getting sleep it ended up being a good place for him to be tucked away up there because when they're all coming in and out they have different schedules they're coming in late and some people are already sleeping or leaving early and other people are already sleeping. I feel like my son was able to block out the noise more because he was up there and tucked away as opposed to the one guy who had the bed against the wall next to the door where you come in and out of the room. I feel like that kid probably had a harder time and was affected more. Plus his, his bed was on the wall that's in the hall with all the noise of whatever is going on outside of his room. Remember that wherever your child is going, there are stores. And so it's not necessary to buy every little thing. Yes, if your child is a girl with special products that they like to use for hair and makeup, yes, absolutely stock up on that if the demographic of the place that you're moving to will not cater to that. But if you're trying to buy a bar of Dove soap, you don't need to send your child with a case of Dove soap because they can easily purchase that or you can go with your child and purchase things like toothpaste, a toothbrush, you know, some of these things can make your packing lighter if you can go ahead and get those things then. As far as school supplies, I have found that back to school sales do matter. Your child probably will need a laptop. There may be sales to purchase one if you need to purchase one, paper, uh, pencils, all these kind of things. I do find that those things do add up. So I don't recommend trying to buy those things right now and do wait for the sales, but realize that you don't really know how much of some of these things your child will need so don't go overboard don't go overboard it's really easy to get those things one thing that I wish someone had told me about was how aggressively some of the universities market making this experience easier for you they will offer you like we were offered all sorts of packages and honestly I haven't really seen any that we actually needed. The one that I regretted the most because I jumped on this because, you know, they sent out a letter saying that don't forget that the twin size beds are not 
regular queen, twin size beds. They're bigger, so you can't just go to the store and buy sheets yourself. So we're offering you, you know, a package where you can buy and you could customize the package uh, however many sheets you wanted to buy. But it was at a, a high cost. It, not that high, but higher because I jumped and I purchased the package. So I was like, oh my God, you know, these are special sheets and you know, my son must have these sheets. And then I went to Walmart and I noticed, wait a minute, I ended up in the, sh in the sheet uh, section and I noticed they had an extra size that I had never noticed before in twin sheets. And I asked myself, could this be for college students? And so I asked the salesperson, do college students come in and purchase these? And she said all the time. And I think the cost difference was something like the sheets at Walmart were $9.99 and the ones that I had purchased were like $20. It was a ridiculous price difference. You can buy your own sheets, just ask if they sell the bigger sheets and find out if that's an issue at your university. I, it probably would be. You know, they recommended getting mattress pads and all of this stuff and you can buy it on your own. You don't have to use the university package unless, you know, maybe you're traveling to another, your child is going to another country for school and, you know, weight with luggage is an issue and you yourself won't be able to come also or you know if it's more convenient for you by all means make use of these conveniences but if you can do it yourself it's always more economical that way mid-year or a couple of months into the semester we started getting emails about you know we could put together a care package for your child you know with snacks and warm a warm message to encourage your child in the heat you know of them studying and that pulled on my heart heartstrings you know like yeah you know I want my kids to be encouraged or thinking to yourself his roommates might get care packages and you know he'll just be sitting there without a care package and then I had to slap myself two times and think I mean I could put together my own care package and it would be customized to my child's exact needs and and desires without having to give the school my money for that and so be thinking when you get the mailings with the things that they're offering, how you can do it yourself or how useful it will actually be to your child who may not even really want a care package. They might, they might prefer for you to put $100 into their account. And that leads into the next question, you know, how are you going to make uh, the financial exchange money exchanging money between you and your child as easy as possible and what we did was growing up our child had a custodial bank account and when he decided to go into college we just simply changed that to a regular adult account and we were just able we, we are just able to deposit money into his account and any anything checks any job that he does the money easily is direct deposited into his account so having your child have an independent bank account and a and a bank card my child has an atm card which also doubles as a visa card uh, that i find is also helpful for him to be financially independent now when it comes to what kind of bank you want to use that that that's really up to you you can look at the different perks that they have if they're offering higher interest rates and what their benefits are to compare them but credit unions are just as legitimate as you know the other banks that are out there so i think the more important thing is access like will you be able to access your child's account from where you are i feel like that's one of the key factors that we looked at if you went to college yourself, you know how expensive textbooks are. And so I always went the used book route. I, if I could get a used book, I got a used book. Now they have ebooks. And I can't remember if my son actually used an ebook, but that's really a matter of your style of learning. But the ebooks were considerably less expensive than an actual book. So if you don't think it's, if your child and you don't think it's going to be a problem for them to do all of their reading and the ebooks are really, uh, 
user friendly in that you know you can still highlight stuff you, you can still bookmark stuff and you know then then they only have to be walking around with their laptop i mean it it can cut both ways because they only have to manage their laptop if most of their books are ebooks but if anything happens to that laptop they're stuck. The used books and the ebooks are ways that you can cut back on the expense of dropping a hundred dollars or more on one textbook. Yes, the cost is real. As far as meal planning, you know, all of these things will depend on, you know, how your child eats and what's important to your child. My son never eats breakfast. He's not remotely hungry at breakfast. And so any three meals a day type of situation would have been a waste of money for him. So minimum, we wanted him to have two meals a day, but there are all so sorts of different ways that, that they can do it. Two meals a day, one meal a day with money so that they can go to actual restaurants on campus and apply points toward getting food. Some uh, living facilities make it so that they can actually prepare some of their meals or even if your child does eat breakfast maybe your child is okay with having a bagel in the morning and they can purchase the bagel and keep uh, cream cheese in their little refrigerator in their dorm room there are a number of ways to handle the food situation you need to be thinking and discussing and considering with your child from now what you think will work best so don't worry don't worry all of it to think about at once is a little bit overwhelming, but just tackle it one item at a time and it will work out. So I hope all of that was helpful for you. If anyone has any more useful tips from personal experience or you hear something that I left out, leave your comment down below. If you have any uh, questions to ask me, I'm perfectly willing to answer anonymous questions you can private message me and I'll make you a video or talk to you directly. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video if you think it will help anyone else. Be blessed. I came out here, it was cloudy, overcast. I really wanted to be out here on this deck. Then this black mass of clouds just came across the sky.